Hey, hey, party people. Let's talk about how to look for a fashion job and how to apply for a fashion job. This is going to focus on my area of expertise, which is fashion design jobs. But this advice can apply to a lot of different fashion jobs and jobs in general. On the screen, I am working out some ideas for a video I'll be posting in the near future about designing adaptive apparel. You can buy my wheelchair croquis sets at shop.zoehong.com. First of all, if you want a job in fashion now or in the future, go read a bunch of job postings for jobs that you want and make a list of all the skills they require. The point of looking at these job postings is to get an idea as to what the industry is looking for and what you need to work on to go for the jobs that you want. So go do it now. Actually, do it right after the end of this video <laughs> and make a list of the qualifications that you don't have that you need to work on. Some jobs will have niche skills, but you will often see the same things over and over again for design jobs and the same skills required for merchandising jobs over and over again, these listings. OK, so make a list of those things, the commonly listed prerequisites you need to work on. Once you get to the point of applying for a job, you don't need to fulfill every single requirement in order to apply. Try for about 75, 80%. If you fulfill every single requirement for a specific job, you're likely overqualified. Once you get to the point of applying for jobs, the number one rule, okay, if you take away nothing from this video, take this. The number one rule is to tailor every resume, every cover letter, all application materials specifically especially for each job that you apply for. HR people can spot a generic, I don't care that much copy and paste application. Everything about your job application should say, I want this job at your specific company because I love your specific company and here are the reasons why I specifically will be an asset to your specific company and not, I am in general good at stuff, okay? So first, let's discuss where and how to find jobs to apply to. Number one, your network. If you know someone who works at a company you want to work at, work that connection. In general, if you're looking, put out feelers. Let your friends know you're looking. If you're smart, you start networking at school. Go watch my networking video, which I'll link in the description box below. Keep in touch with your classmates. And, you know, with social media, it's easier than ever to do that, to meet people and to keep in touch with people. And yes, I've gotten some fun gigs from my former classmates. Your network isn't solely your besties from kindergarten. Your network also includes people you met at conferences, someone you had a cool interaction with on social media, people like that. And don't forget your teachers. I got my first job out of school because one of my teachers set me up with an interview. Listen, don't get it twisted. They did not set me up with the job. They connected me with someone so I could get an interview. So don't expect jobs to be handed to you, but more like opportunities. Okay? Teachers often have connections in the industry. Teachers may still be working outside of teaching and their colleagues will hit them up when they're looking to fill entry level positions with recent graduates. Number two, go straight to the source. If you want to work at a specific brand, go to their website. Lots of fashion brands have a careers or jobs section on their website. Usually you have to scroll all the way to the bottom to the tiny, tiny links at the bottom of the page. Number three, job boards. There are a lot of job boards out there, but here's where I announce some super exciting news. Welcome to the Threaded Dot Space job board. Basically, listen, basically, my ultimate goal with Threaded is to create a website full of resources for you to help with your educations, to help you in your careers, to help you start and build your businesses. It's a fashion search engine plus fashion marketplace. Okay? I started Threaded by creating a job board. It's a job aggregator. It pulls fashion jobs from a bunch of other job boards all over the internet and puts it all in one place that you can sort and search. Once you find a job you want to apply to, click here 
and you'll be taken to the original posting and you follow their application instructions. And we have mostly design and merchandising jobs right now, but we'll be adding new job categories as we go. We'll also be adding a section for one-time gigs. And yes, we have a page where you can post a job yourself if you're looking for someone. Paid positions only. Now, there might be a bug here and there. Please be patient. This website is a baby fawn still learning to get up on its legs. So yeah, go check out threaded.space. That's the whole URL. It's not threaded.space.com. It's just threaded.space. Check it out and let me know what you think. All right, ways to find jobs number four, your school. Some schools have a job board online or a career services department with counselors to help students find internships or jobs or both. My alma mater has a job board open to all former students. Ask around if your school offers these services. And when you're looking into what fashion schools you want to apply to, ask the schools what they do to help students find work. And here's part two of my exciting news. Threaded.space also has a fashion schools database to help you look for your dream school. You can filter by location, name, and major. Click on a listing, you'll find a screen grab of their website, some basic school info, and if they have contact info or social media publicly posted, we've pulled that and added them here. Yeah, please do keep in mind that we couldn't find every fashion school in the world, especially if they don't have a website in English. But this database does include hundreds of schools that offer all kinds of fashion programs, design, merchandising, marketing, journalism, styling, you name it. If you know of a school that's not here, then we have a submission form. Click here to submit a school. And disclaimer, you know, schools switch up things all the time, even faster than can be updated on their website. So please always double check with the admissions office of that school. Number five, LinkedIn. Okay, now here's part three. Okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't have any exciting news about LinkedIn, but you should still use LinkedIn for your job hunt. It's not enough to just have a profile on LinkedIn. You should have a complete profile, sure, with a professional looking avatar and ask people to endorse your skills, all of that. You should definitely make sure your profile is marked open to work, okay, so recruiters can find you. What you wanna do on LinkedIn is follow the accounts of fashion brands that you wanna work for because they will occasionally announce jobs before they launch a full search or post it elsewhere, simply because posting on social media is so easy. So go follow those brands and follow their application instructions. Also on LinkedIn, if you find someone who works at a company you want to work at, you can also message them and tell them you're looking for a job and ask whether they have anything opening up. When I say someone who works at, I'm talking about people in positions to make hiring decisions like team managers and directors. Okay? Cover letter rules apply here. And I'll talk about cover letters soon. Number six, recruiters. You can apply with recruiters like 24 seven. I'm not affiliated with any recruiters and I have no opinions about any recruiters, but this is also an option. You interview with the recruiter and if you qualify, they'll send you on job interviews. Absolutely, 714% read all the contracts involved before you sign anything with recruiters. And a few notes to consider. Remember to follow up and send thank yous. If you get an interview, Go to the interview and then send a thank you email to everyone you met on the interview before the end of the day. You might not get that job, but you might make a friend or a connection and a possible intro to a different job. If someone helped you in your job search, email them a little thank you. Okay? Don't pester constantly, but it doesn't hurt to follow up with people if you don't hear from them after a while. Two, three days afterwards, you know, people get busy. Another thing to consider you might have to broaden your search. Your dream job might be called something weird, but the actual job duties may be things that you want to do. Or you may have to work something related to your dream job before you can move laterally into something you want more. You may have to move. I know a lot of you don't want to hear this, but not every city has enough industry jobs or any fashion industry at all. And you can't keep looking for something that doesn't exist. All right, now let's discuss preparing job application materials. Number one, resume. 
look up the standard requirements for resumes in the country you're applying to. You know, some countries require headshots or your date of birth included in the resume. Some countries do not. In the U.S., you should not include those. Just your name, email, and phone number at the top of your resume is fine. You know, we don't even require physical mailing addresses anymore because we don't mail anything. We email it. Readability in a resume is more important than a fancy design. Length varies country to country, but in the U.S., your resume should be no longer than one page, single-sided, except for teaching CVs. Okay? And I don't imagine other countries want to read long resumes either. No dark colors in the background that makes the words hard to read. Work experience is the most important. Nobody cares about your random interests and hobbies like parasailing or reading poetry. People definitely care about relevant skills like different languages you can read, write, and speak, and software. List any awards or competitions you won, and if you're a recent graduate, include any merit-based scholarships. You don't need to write out an objective. We all know your objective is to get the job. <laughs> Use action verbs to describe what you did at your previous jobs as job titles don't mean much. And you can share how, you know, maybe jobs that aren't directly related to the job you're applying for, like you've learned skills at these jobs that will still apply. Use bullet points to create a list of these actions. No one wants to read a big old paragraph. Boom, created this. Boom, managed this. Boom, designed this. I'm gonna drop a link in the description box. It's Harvard Law School's list of action verbs to help you describe your experiences and accomplishments. Again, tailor your resume to the job you're applying for. If I was applying for a brand that is known for their prints, I would highlight that I develop prints and graphics and different artworks, embellishments at previous companies. If the job was more geared towards product development than design, I would make sure I wrote about my product development experience within my design roles. You can and should literally copy and paste phrases from the job listing. If they're looking for someone who can quote unquote draw flats in Adobe Illustrator, and you know how to do that, then write exactly that in your resume since that's what they're scanning for. Number two, cover letters. A cover letter can be a tell me about yourself section on an online application or the email you send with your resume as an attachment. This again should be tailored to the specific job, highlighting how you will be an asset to the company in one or two short paragraphs. Don't go on and on. That's really what people want to hear, how you will help them, what you have to offer them, okay? For example, dear person, okay? And try to find their name. It's way better than to whom it may concern, okay? Dear person, my name is Zoe, and I'm excited to apply for the design assistant position at your company, ABC Bras. My years of working lingerie retail, having countless conversations with customers, and having fit so many people for bras, I have fine-tuned my lingerie design skills to strike the right balance between creativity and commercial needs. I would be a great fit at ABC Bras because I think ABC also strives and succeeds at striking that perfect balance between form and function. Please see enclosed for resume and a few samples of my design work. References available upon request. And nothing much longer than that. Number three, your online portfolio. Yes, you need one. And if you're freaked out about people finding it and copying everything, you can password protect it. But honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal. But make sure you include the password in your job application. What I'm about to say only applies to job portfolios, not portfolios to apply to a fashion school. For school portfolios, you need to follow the instructions given by the specific school that you want to apply to because all fashion schools have different portfolio requirements. Check the description box below for a link to my fashion school playlist. More specifically, 
Let's talk about job hunt portfolios for people early in their careers and don't have a lot of work examples to include. If you have photographs of your work from a previous job, definitely include those. Okay. You should have at least three projects to show at each interview. If you only want to work in a specific category and will only apply to those jobs, you can do just three projects. Let's say you want to do bridal. You can do like two bridal and one bridesmaid collection or a mother of the bride collection or some combination. You could do one big project that shows bridal and corresponding bridesmaid and mother of the bride dresses and then two smaller bridal collections. Although I will say there is a serious lack of bridesmaid and mother of the bride, uh, mother of the groom dresses in the market. So you know, but even within a category, you should show some range. Honestly, though, especially in the beginning of your career, I would show a bit more range, like have a collection of non-bridal evening wear and semi-formal cocktail dresses as well. If you're aiming for, say, menswear in general, you don't care, you just love menswear, I do five projects doing all different kinds of menswear and show the top three projects that relate to the company you're applying to at that interview. Now, don't freak out. When I say five projects, not every project needs to be equally elaborate. I would do like one big project with complete outfits for a fall collection with suits and shirts and coats and jackets, etc. And then a smaller but still complete project in another direction like men's athleisure, complete outfits with hoodies and shorts, etc. And then I would focus on smaller projects that focus on categories you like to design best. For me, I would include a denim project, mainly jeans and one or two jackets. I would include swatches of washes that I played with to show off my denim knowledge. And then since I love designing outerwear, I would do a small project focusing on some vegan leather jackets and all the beautiful small design details that really make a great men's jacket. Draw some amazing flats and illustrators and have some detailed close-ups. For example, like a chest pocket with zips and snaps and double needle top stitching and all that good stuff. Talk about sustainable material options. And then a small group of button-down shirts in which I design all the prints and show off my print design ability. So like one big, one medium, and three small projects. And then again, depending on who I'm interviewing with, I would shuffle and show just the three projects that I think would apply the best. So what's in a big project and what's in a small project? Let's go over the components of a portfolio project. Big projects obviously have all the parts, mood board, color story, fabric board with swatches cut out neatly and labeled correctly, figure illustrations with all the outfits done by hand or digitally, front and back flats of each garment done in Adobe Illustrator. I really like it when I can see the flats and the figure together. So you can have like a full lineup page and then put a single outfit on a page with the corresponding flats, swatches, and then like a maybe a detailed close-up sketch of a little part. Include a tech pack for a complicated garment if you are also open to tech design jobs. You can include a completed sewn garment, but it's not necessary unless you're looking for pattern making jobs. If you do, use clean front and back photos that show off the construction and fit. You can show in process photos, but only if you include the final piece. If you include a tech pack and photos of a finished garment, they should belong all to the same garment. Some people love to see design process. I would not put that in your online portfolio, but I would take a croquis book to the interview just in case. A croquis book is a sketchbook that catalogs all your design process, your collaging, your sketchbook development, your messy sketches and notes, photos of your muslin drapes, all your process, and you know all the sketches of designs that didn't make it to the final lineup. Okay, put it all together in a book separate from your portfolio. 
And that's for your big projects. For small projects, you could have one page that has, you know, a couple inspo images, your colors, your swatches, and then one board with your illustrations, if you're good at illustrations, or you could do a set of colored flats. If you're doing five pairs of jeans for a mini project, I just do illustrations of legs. And then another board with beautiful black and white front and back flats with detailed close-ups as necessary. And then, of course, if something like that, definitely include fabric swatches and flats. Actually, fabric swatches and flats are the most important parts of any design project. So make sure you include those with every project. Go check out my building a portfolio playlist for more detailed videos on portfolios. And I'll drop the link in the description box below. Number four, portfolio sneak peeks. When you email about a job, your main email should be your cover letter and you should attach a Word doc or PDF resume and one or two PDFs that are sneak peeks to your portfolio. Do not send your entire portfolio unless they ask for it expressly as an attachment. Do not send huge files to clog up their email storage. I hate this so much. Don't reduce the file size so much that the image quality is compromised either. Put together a page or two that it, of your best work that applies to the specific job you're applying towards. Okay? Using my menswear example from before, if you're applying for a tech design job at an athleisure company, put together some colored athleisure flats and some detail sheets that will go into a tech pack to show that you understand construction. If you're applying for a men's outerwear design position, take one of your menswear projects, put together a page with your best pieces with a note that says that they can see the rest at the link provided. Number five, social media. If you have a personal Instagram full of pics of you and your friends getting drunk by the lake, that's great. Don't share that with your work stuff. If you have an Instagram that's a mix, either don't share it or separate them out. My advice would be a link to a work-only Instagram account on your portfolio or not at all. Facebook and Twitter are kind of whatever. If you have a professional YouTube channel or TikTok, link that. Keywords being exclusively work-related or professional. And lastly, a few more links. Go check out my interviews with fashion designer Melissa Klamia and costume designer Shirley Itzakovich. In those videos, we discuss how to find work in their respective fields. Links are in the description box as usual, along with other links to related content and my social media. And I highly recommend that you read the Ask a Manager blog at askamanager.org. It's basically an advice column for workplace problems. It's not a fashion industry specific blog, but much of the advice is just solid overall. I follow the account on Twitter so I can find out when she posts new stuff. And honestly, you know, it's just really good to, you know, get a handle on what is acceptable in an office, in a workplace, and what is not. Like reading about other people's behavior, what they did to resolve problems, like all of this can help you in your own professional life. And that's it for today's video. Please share this video with your fellow job hunters and subscribe if you haven't already. Please check out threaded.space and let me know what you think. I will be doing a how to design adaptive apparel video in the future, so be on the lookout for that. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today. It really does help my channel out, and I'll see you in the next video.